Welcome everybody, Joe here with HMWF LLC. Today, we're going to talk about tuning a chainsaw carburetor. We're going to go over lean tunes, tunes that are too rich, where it's four stroking, what a four stroke sound is, what a two stroke cleaned up sound is, and uh, we're going to do it all on the dyno. How well does a lean tune perform? How well does a rich tune perform? Is there any difference between the two? Do you make more power with a lean tune, more RPM? Stick around. All right, that's all we have here. Your typical garage sale, side of the road, cheap, I want to get into chainsaws type saw. It's a uh, well-used, maybe even abused, Echo CS590 Timberwolf. It does run. It hasn't been started in probably six months, eight months or so. So we'll do a cold start. I'll go over all of the idle adjustments, the high side, the low side, what they do, everything else. You can see on the 590, the limiters have already been removed. The high screw is the screw on the left. The low screw is the screw on the right. The screw at the top, the Phillips with the slot, that is the idle adjustment on these Echo 590, 600, 620s. You can see the H would be the high screw. The L is the low screw. The T is the idle. Sometimes on steels, it'll be LA but it's normally above or below the other two screws, the H and the L. Here's the limiter caps. These stop you from turning the screws too far one direction or the other from factory. These little tabs will hit the, a plate that's in the carburetors and that's what stops you from adjusting them or tuning them, but sometimes they have to be removed and uh, so the carburetor can be adjusted properly. Here's a couple of removal tools. This is the cheap DIY find it in your drawer tool, a drywall screw with a little bit of the tip ground down. All right, or here is the steel tool. It's a left-handed thread, screws in. Works better on the steels because they have a larger hole in some of their limiters. What I like to do is trim those tabs off. That way you can still use your tuning screwdriver and hit the screws easy, fits through the grommets and everything else. If you just remove those tabs with a razor blade, you can slide this back on and adjust your carburetor fully. Vin, vin, vin. Brah, brah, brah. All right, on these Echoes, the kill switch is just a simple toggle. Down is off, up is on. Chokes over here, pull it out. Then I like to give it four or five pulls. And once you hear that first pop, then you got to push the choke in and give it a couple more pulls. Like I said, this hasn't been started in quite a few months, so we'll see how it does. There's that pop. Push the choke in. to put down the dyno and see what different tunes do.
That's a lean stall. You hear it kind of hunting and starving and then it finally just putters out like that. If it needs choke to start or if it needs choke to pop, that means you're lean as well. Here's the results. Dark red line, this red line here, are the horsepower, right here, and torque of the rich test. You can see there was no RPM made, and it took so long to clean up that you're already out of your power window before it finally started two-stroking, and then it 
caught on a little bit, so the dyno quit reading, but it's not making any more power as it's going down. All right. This run here is the lean run with the 620 carb. So bigger carb, everything else. Look, it's got all this RPM and it falls right off. Still tuned okay, still ran okay, but it does zero good to have a saw extra lean. Here's your normal, normal good tune right there. It still reaches out, a little over 11,000, starting to apply the load. It finally cleans up, making peak power right around 8,700. Holds the good power all the way down, you know, right here from 7, 7,500 to 9, 9,500. That, that's where all the wood cutting's going on. Right there. Yeah, they can spin a lot of RPM out of the wood. A couple inches into the log, they're right back down here. So it's more important to have a nice, strong four-stroking sound out of the wood, no load, than it is for really high-tack numbers. Now, if you go way too rich, you're just making carbon, wasting fuel, wasting oil, no power, nothing's getting done. So try and find something in the middle and look at the rewards. I hope this helps some of you. Leave a comment if you have any other questions or need me to touch up on a more specific issue or problem or scenario. These numbers over here are taken at 8,700 RPM. So this real thin red line that runs vertical here. The rich one barely made over one and a half horse at 8,700. The lean one, just over three horsepower at 8,700. A good tune right where it needs to be with the 620 carb makes 4.6 horsepower. That's a pretty big jump, even though you're giving up a few RPM from the lean tune. Regardless of the tune, doesn't matter if you have it tuned and the saw is able to spin 18,000 RPM. If the ports, the muffler, the intake, everything else is not tuned to make power around 18,000 RPM, it's just not going to matter. It's one of those things that peak power right here is determined by the port arrangement. The intake duration, exhaust duration, transfer durations, the amount of blowdown, the exhaust open area, all sorts of factors go into it, case compression, lots of different things. And that's what we do when we pour them. We try and optimize all of those things to work together to pit, put the power in an area where we want it. Thanks for watching, guys.